Now, we all know what's been said about Vincent K. McMahon over the years. He's a ruthless, cunning businessman, that he did everything he could to snuff out his competition and skip de skip and whoop de woo And all of that is true. You know, people could talk about, well, he loves making money over everything else. He enjoys screwing over the talent more than anything else. It's all of this and all that. He's seeking and still desperately seeking in kind of a pathetic way mainstream acceptance and mainstream exposure. He wants to be viewed like he's in the movie business, not the wrestling business. So he's been trying to call this stuff sports entertainment for over three decades. And, you know, to varying degrees, all of that is true. But the one thing that Vince McMahon treasures the most, the one thing that Vince McMahon lives for the most is not money, it's control. It is absolutely control. And if you think it is anything else that gets his off, rocks off more, you are mistaken. It's why he has the clause in the contracts for the talent to be independent contractors, yet somehow, some way, they can't go anywhere or do anything with their name or likeness without Vince McMahon giving final approval. It's why after all of these years, he's still the one that you hear stories about month after month that you get to a Raw or a SmackDown and he rips up the script and starts it all over. It's because the man craves control. It's what he lives for. It is at the very heart and the very essence of who he is as a businessman, as a man. He needs control. He has to have control. And he can't ever, ever let it go. And in his advancing years, that certainly has not changed. And if anything, it only gets worse. Now look, there are things that businesses do that we don't always like. It's also a matter of when you're not immediately embedded into what that business does, or if you are embedded into what that business does, but you're at a lower level, perspectives are changed. Like you might be looking at it from one scope, whereas the scope at the top of that organization is going to be vastly different. And there are a lot of different factors to consider. Like Vince has to answer to a board of directors. He has to answer to shareholders. He has to answer to the street, meaning Wall Street. Like there are certain things that we could look at as wrestling fans, or even some of us that are shareholders, and say, you know what? Might not agree with everything, but don't necessarily have to agree with everything. But this crap that he's trying to pull now, basically pulling the plug or trying to pull the plug on the talent doing deals of, for third-party content with sites like Twitch in Cameo, just feels like it's a bridge too far. A bridge too far. To the point where Vince McMahon is potentially playing with fire here. And if he's not really, really careful in how he approaches it, not that he cares because he's got a God complex, there's no question about that. He believes he has the right to exercise the control based off of what he's put in these talents contracts, which by and large, because wrestlers are idiots, he can. He needs to be really, really careful and tread really, really lightly. The long and short of it is, apparently last week, he told the talent that you have until October 2nd, you're going to stop doing these independent deals with places like Twitch and Cameo and so forth. And predictably, when that word got out yesterday, Friday afternoon, a couple hours before SmackDown, uh, I believe it was Raj at Wrestling Inc. that initially had broken the story, uh, the outrage was swift, it was quick, and it was massive. And you know what's bad is you're going through the night and you see people like Andrew Yang weighing in talking about, you know, if he's not the next Department of Labor, he's going to have that person's phone number and he's going to be calling for them to investigate <laughs> WWE's labor practices, which on the one hand, it's like, cool, somebody finally should because some of the crap they've gotten away with, I can't imagine actually being legal. On the other hand, it's like, do we have bigger fish to fry? But the outrage was swift and it was massive. And it should be, and we also shouldn't be surprised that WWE is trying some crap like this because at the end of the day, we know what the WWE, and especially Vince McMahon, is about. It is about control. Like, you look at their history. If you remember when Twitter was really becoming a big deal and people were already using Vines, instead of using the established infrastructure that was in place, which would be what somebody that doesn't have an obsession with control would do, somebody that I would argue is smart would do, Vince McMahon says, let's buy in the towns! 
And let's force everybody to use towels! And how'd that go? <laughs> if I remember years back, wasn't it? When Facebook was really breaking onto the scene and becoming a really big deal, instead of embracing that already established technology, Vince wanting to have the control, not being able to accept that somebody else could do something better than him, said, you know what, by God, we're going to create this WWE Universe site. And you're going to set yourself back several years in the process. Like, if you want to talk about things that Vince did to damage the brand significantly, it was the fact that early on, he was in charge of the internet strategy. He was in charge of that approach. And it was an unmitigated disaster. All that time you spent type, touting tout, does it even exist anymore? Like, seriously. Now, over the past few years, as I could imagine, Stephanie and Hunter getting more involved in actually leading and saying, Vince, you don't know the fucking internet, so back the hell off. Um, it, it's gotten better. And they have a much better approach and understanding of it. But this is an example here where now Vince sinks his greasy, grimy, grubby grips into another thing in the internet realm that he's not connected with. He doesn't understand. He never will understand. And by allowing him to continue to exercise control over this could cause true unmitigated disaster. And imagine going to your board of directors. Imagine going to your shareholders and trying to tell them that no, I don't want my talent to use their name and likeness to get promotion in other places to bring more eyeballs potentially in my product. I wouldn't want that. If I ever heard a CEO say this, and I was on the board of directors, number one, you should immediately get up and slap the shit out of him. Number two, you should be immediately calling a vote to have him removed. That's just stupid. You would think you would want every chance and opportunity you possibly have in order to advertise and promote and market your product, especially if you're not coming out of pocket for it. Now, in the interest of fairness to Vince and the WWE, let's make sure a couple of things are established. If he said, I don't want you using your WWE-owned ring names for these channels and not giving us a cut, 100% with them. 100% agree. And anybody that would disagree with that, they have a problem. That's fair. That's logical. I can't own the intellectual property and then you're profiting off of the intellectual property and not giving me my cut of the pie. There is nothing unreasonable about asking the talent to do something about that. Can't just sit there and say, hey, I'm so-and-so WWE and I'm a wrestler for WWE under this name and I'm going to make all of this money here and I'm not going to give a cut to the company that actually owns the intellectual property. Like, that's just, that's just basic intellectual property law. Like, I'm on Vince's side there. If he said, I don't want you streaming during our shows, whether it be Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, can get a little bit dicier there because they're allegedly supposed to be independent contractors. But at the same point in time, you could say, you know what? That kind of makes sense. Like, that's a, that's a best practice. You know, that's something that you would see in the corporate world under the best practices don't compete up against our own product like that's killing the greater good. I'm in line with that and I would agree with that. I could also understand Vince McMahon saying, you know, what we don't want you to do is be spilling backstage secrets in those types of things. Again, totally in line with that. Totally agree with that. You know, in my real world job, we don't have to sit there and avoid social media, but if we ever reference the company that we work for, while we are certainly open to do that because of the sensitivity from a financial standpoint, potentially impacting things such as customer information and trying to adhere to Reg P and other regulatory standards, you know, there are certain things we can't tweet about, certain things that we are not allowed to tweet about, certain things that are against the best practices for that company's employees. You know, especially when some of those things could potentially tweeted could have impacts when it comes to uh, stock prices and shareholder value and those types of things. Again, totally understandable. And if Vince was coming at it from that approach and that approach alone, I'm with him. And then I actually would be on here 100% defending him. Because not only would he be well within his rights to do so, like it's just a sane, logical thing to ask. But while when you're talking about you don't want them to do it at all, this is the same type of crap that goes back to the whole thing with Zack Ryder all those years back with the Long Island Ice Z YouTube channel, whatever the hell it was called that Zack Ryder did. You know, 
They, the company didn't use them. They weren't doing anything with them. So a young man decides, you know what? Let me go do something to try to get myself over. He does get himself over, and he gets himself over in a big, legitimate way. And not only does the company not run with that and not embrace that, but because they didn't come up with it and Vince couldn't control it, they did everything they could to kill it and kill his character as a result and eventually succeeded because it's all about control. If it doesn't come through Vince, then it's like it doesn't matter. And that, therein lies the fundamental problem. It's not just about you, dude. Everything can't come through you. It's not a dictatorship. And long term, you ain't living forever. Some point day, you will die. R.I.P. What the hell is your gonna company going to do without you there? Because you created this kind of insulated, isolated bubble where everything has to go through you. That's not effective leadership. Certainly sure the hell is not. Now you're telling these talents that they can't make secondary income even though you won't provide them basic things such as health insurance and 401ks and pensions and things like that. You're telling them not only can you not use the likeness, but you're going to try and play the we own your real name card too. Crap, that sounds like the trade-off of, hey, Samoa Joe, you want to come into WWE? Great. You want to use that name? AJ Styles, you want to use that name? Great. But as long as you're here, we're going to own every single piece of you. But to sit there and say, I'm going to undercut these guys and tell them they can't do this, and that if they continue to do this, where they're trying to make a secondary income, where they could actually help get more exposure for our product, if they don't cut this out, I'm going to potentially fire them. Which begs a larger question. How can you technically fire somebody that is an independent contractor and therefore self-employed? Which is a whole different concept, a whole different discussion that frankly I've had several times on this channel over the years. But it's all about control. Vince just wants control. He wants these things all to come through him. So that way, he could use it as yet another opportunity to line his company's coffers and fuck over the talent. If you think it's anything other than that, you're a clown. Like, look at the response that WWE released on Saturday, talking about the talent ceasing third-party deals by October 2nd. And I quote, Much like Disney and Warner Brothers, WWE creates, promotes, and invests in its intellectual property, i.e. the stage names of performers like The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns, Big E, and Braun Strowman. It is the control and exploitation of these characters that allows WWE to drive revenue, which in turn enables the company to compensate performers at the highest levels in the sports entertainment industry. Notwithstanding the contractual language, interesting, it is imperative for the success of our company to protect our greatest assets and establish partnerships with third parties on a company-wide basis, rather than at the individual level, which as a result will provide more value for all involved. Unquote. Number one, did you like the way they utilized the word exploitation? Boy, if there was ever a corporate statement that more perfectly embodied and epitomized what a company does to its employees who aren't actually employees, but they treat them like your freaking property, it is that word exploitation. They literally sit there, instead of using the a phrase such as, it is the control and usage, the control and implementation, the control and execution of a strategy of using it went flat out to the word exploitation. That's crazy to me. And then the whole part of when you get to the end of the statement, it says, it is imperative for the success of our company to protect our greatest assets and establish partnerships with third parties on a company-wide basis rather than at the individual level, which as a result will provide more value for all involved, which they know is bullshit. They know that is bullshit, and they deserve to be called out on that bullshit. What this basically means is WWE is trying to get themselves some type of a big-time deal with a cameo or a Twitch so they could take a large part of the portion, and then they could sit there and say, well, we built this money that comes from this into your downside guarantee, even though it really doesn't fucking exist, or we'll give you some type of payout here based off of all these calculated ratios that in no way, shape, or form is going to compensate for the thousands, and in some cases, hundreds of thousands that some of these talents make via these different sites over the course of a year. So that's garbage. And the person who put this out knows they're garbage. And Vince McMahon knows he's garbage. I can't imagine looking in the mirror 
and being okay with this and thinking that this is cool and acceptable. What the reality is, you know, if all of a sudden the wrestling talent banded together in the company and said, hey, we're not going on until you change this, you know what's going to happen? Nothing. There will be enough desperate whores within the company that will undercut you. He'll bring in other people that will be desperate to sign because they'll be chasing dollar signs in the WWE. There is no leverage here. It would literally take like an industry-wide blackout to WWE to say none of the talent want to work there, which cut down the ability to even run a TV show and a live TV show at that, which would significantly hinder the relationship with Fox and USA Network, respectively, when it comes to the television deals for SmackDown and Raw. It would take something like that in order for that to actually work. That ain't happening. Now, you can sit there and raise a fuss and raise, you know, the profile of this and potentially go to sponsors like they did, people did with Snickers and therefore got that Moolah, um, what was it, the Moolah Battle Royal change or whatever it was. And we, it was whatever it was. You remember that, all that outrage a couple of years back? You, know, you go to the advertisers. Now all the advertisers are starting to take notice and the advertisers are starting to pay attention. They're saying, whoa, 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 pump the freaking brakes here a little bit, Vincey boy. And as is so often the case, he does just that. But the whole thing is, I got to put this down because I wanted to make sure I read that quote and captured it. Um, this is just another pathetic attempt by Vince McMahon to exercise his control over people. Like if you remember the Mr. McMahon character years back when he talked about he enjoyed destroying people's lives. I don't know that he enjoys destroying people's lives. But he sure, certainly sure as hell gets off on and enjoys controlling them and feeling like he owns them. Like massive Vince and all of his independent contractors slave. Like that is the type of mindset and mentality that we are seriously talking about here with Vincent K. McMahon. And it's sickening. I just, for the life of me, I don't understand why it is so goddamn important to Vince to have to sit there and just try to totally shut shit down. Have some standards, yes. Set some guidelines, fair. Say, you're not going to be making 5000 10000 20000 50000 a month using a WWE likeness, a WWE intellectual property, and not giving the company some type of a cut of the pie. Agreed! Stop giving away all of our backstage secrets. Agreed! Like, these are reasonable, rational things, but instead of going there, Vince has got to try and kibosh the whole damn thing because as a result, he lives for, seeks, and desires control more than anything else. More than JJ, more than butthole, more than anything else he may want, even more than his steroids. And that's saying something. You know, and I do hope in some ways that the talent push back especially when it comes to the part of the talent contract under intellectual property that talks about owning of the real names, like you either fight back one or two ways. You either stubbornly dig in and say, I don't, I'm not giving up ownership of my real name and nor is that legal, nor should that hold up, especially since you are classifying us as independent contractors. That is something that you should be battling uh, through some type of labor board or something. That is a battle worth fighting, certainly. And just because WWE has passed it through their lawyers doesn't mean shit in the grand scheme of things. A lot of times what happens is WWE, just like many other big companies, can use their resources, their infrastructure, their size to intimidate folks into submission. And that is something that people should not submit to. Furthermore, if you want to get creative around it, then come up with your own name. Everybody knows who the hell you are anyways. Come up with some nickname. Come up with your own intellectual property that WWE can't utilize and can't say shit about. Like This is literally getting to the point where WWE is trying to own its people. And if you're going to own them, then by God, you should at least give them paid vacation. You should give them paid sick time. You should give them you know, things such as medical insurance. Pension and 401k, you do it for the fucking corporate employees. Why can't you do it for those that actually make the money and drive the revenue for your company and your shareholders? I can't imagine going to the shareholders still, and me being one of them, and telling me that this is a good idea, and telling me that this is wise. It's not wise. It's stupid. It is about 
an increasingly aging, losing his grip on reality old man that can't let go of the thing that he treasures the most control because of his massive, massive insecurities. You could talk about ego size, and sure, that man certainly has a massive ego, and a lot of it deserve it. But his ego is incredibly fragile. Don't you mistake yourself about that. With all the problems you've got going on, you're talking about trying to reimagine WWE. The one way to not do that, you incompetent fuckstick, is to sit there and try to undercut any internet exposure, any internet presence your company has in any way, shape, or form, directly or indirectly. How in the hell in this increasingly digital age does that make any damn sense to anybody? And I couldn't imagine being one of the talent. And, and the talent's got to eat some of this too. Like stop signing contracts where you're signing over ownership rights to your real name. I couldn't imagine any company ever telling me, like, as long as you work for us, we own your real name. Screw it! I'm out of there. And if I ever had my current employer or any other employer tell me that I could no longer do things like YouTube or be on social media, guess what? Screw it! Straight up your ass. Ask you, I'll go find another job that doesn't care. Because you're not going to own every damn element and segment of my fucking life. As I look to the wrestlers and the talent, if you will, to actually sit there and grow a set and have a bit of backbone here and stand their ground, I, I, I don't expect anything big will come out of this. Now, maybe they will back off. And I hope they do a little bit. They shouldn't back off of wanting their cut. I'm fair. They shouldn't back off of saying, stop revealing backstage crap. Cool. Stop streaming during the other shows that our product or company runs. Fair. All of these things are fair. But beyond that, it's nothing more than control. Typical kind of balance between the elite and everybody else. That's what this is. It just feels like again, another example of political style class warfare. The rich want to get richer. And in this case, you feel a little less sympathy because you're like, hey, the rich want to get richer and you got other but significantly less rich but still kind of rich people trying to battle it out. But the reality is, is they're not as rich as you might think for. So if some of them went to these different you know, avenues in order to get some revenue because they weren't making enough money for the damn company and they weren't getting booked on television and all this crap. Like how much is enough, Vince? When, when, when can you just let some of this childishness and some of this pettiness go? Is it stuff like this here that will create an environment that strengthens your competition? It is this type of stuff here that will drive others to your competition. It is stuff like this here that could potentially long-term create even more competition in the marketplace. It is this type of incessant desire to control things that will take the entire ship down. And maybe you won't care because by then you'll be dead. Maybe you won't. Need to get a little bit of a grip on reality. This is fucking ridiculous.